Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Planning Overview. This is Lecture A. The objectives for Project Planning Overview are to identify the importance and purpose of effective planning, identify and describe each component of the project management plan, define and prepare project planning documents. This lecture will focus on the first two objectives. Before we can begin discussing the activities related to project planning, we need to review some basic terminology. Let's start with defining a project. Then let's differentiate a project from a program and from an operational activity. A project is defined as a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. It is important also to understand that an operation is an ongoing or repetitive activity or service. Its objective is to sustain the core business. As we said earlier, a project is a temporary endeavor that creates a unique product or service. It generally has a very well-defined purpose. It also consumes time, resources, and money. It is also characterized by a progressive elaboration. Finally, a program is a group of related projects that are managed in a coordinated way to obtain the benefits and control not available for managing them individually. As indicated on the slide, an operation is the smallest level shown within the bullseye. As we work outward in the bullseye, we see projects and then containing both other areas, the program. It's important to consider that, like snowflakes, no two projects are identical. The project team will decide how the project is planned, monitored, and controlled, as determined by the nature of the project. Types of healthcare projects depend on the type of organization. This can include hospitals and physician practices, insurance companies, laboratories, or government institutions. Many projects deal with moving or analyzing data in some way. Some examples include analysis or diagnoses and money spent, analysis of how much business a particular physician brings to a practice. Hospitals analyze data based on bed type that supports billing and charges, sharing information, for example, creating a universal patient chart creating community health information networks. Disease management, for example, collecting information from different sources into a single database for being a warehouse. Collecting data for studies and research. Why are projects initiated? Now that we understand the definition of a project and its relationship to programs and operations, Let's consider why a project is undertaken. 
Organizations can't perform all projects due to human resource and funding constraints. Stated another way, there are usually more projects than people and money available in an organization. Therefore, prudent decisions must be made concerning which projects are selected. Once the project is selected and a project charter exists, the project initiation is completed and the planning process can begin. Remember the project charter authorizes the existence of the project, designates the project manager, and provides the project manager with the authority to acquire resources and lead the projects. Some of these reasons include request from customers, market demand, organizational need, legal requirements, technological advances, and social needs. Project planning can begin at the completion of two key project initiation processes, which are 1. The project charter is created and approved by the project's sponsor, and 2. The project stakeholders are identified. As this slide indicates, project planning begins after a project initiation and must take place prior to project execution. There are five key process groups. Initiating processes are performed to define a new project or new phase of an existing project. A project charter is created, stakeholders are identified, and the project is started. Planning processes are performed to define the scope and objectives of the project and develop plans to accomplish the objectives. During project planning, the project management plan and project documents are developed. These are used to perform the project. Executing processes are performed to accomplish the work of the project and satisfy the project objectives. Monitoring and controlling processes involve tracking, reviewing, and controlling the progress and performance of the project. They are used to identify required changes to the project management plan and take corrective steps appropriate to accommodate those changes. The closing processes are performed to finalize all activities and formally close the project or phase. Planning is a crucial step in project management. Without planning, it is difficult to ensure a project's success. It is unwise to undertake a project of any size or complexity without taking the time to plan the approach to how the project objectives will be accomplished. Think about it. You probably wouldn't go on vacation or get married without planning. You shouldn't start any project without planning the work that must be performed, including things such as scheduling and budgeting. Some of the activities that take place during project planning include collecting requirements, defining the scope of the project, developing the project management plan, defining the activities that must take place during the project, creating a work breakdown structure, developing a schedule, identifying and assessing risks, developing risk response plans, and developing a communications plan. This slide lists the key activities that take place when planning a project. You should estimate costs, determine the budget, start to make procurement decisions, estimate resource requirements, define project roles and responsibilities, develop a telecommunications management plan, determine how performance will be measured, plan for quality, and conduct a kickoff meeting. For example, planning activities for a vacation project could include planning for lodging and transportation, entertainment, food, and financing, and other key elements. Planning activities for a wedding could involve planning for invitations and the rehearsal dinner, the actual marriage ceremony, which would include venue, flowers, and other items, and the post-wedding event, such as the reception or honeymoon. Planning activities for an IT project could include design, collecting requirements, coding, programming, site installation, system analysis, testing, documentation training, and various other activities. 
Now that we've talked a little bit about the key processes and some of the activities during the planning process, let's talk a bit about factors that lead to project success or failure. By evaluating prior projects, we can acquire information that is beneficial to managing our current projects. We want to repeat our successes and take steps to avoid problems. Let's take a look at some of the attributes successful projects enjoy and the factors that can contribute to failure. This learning activity addresses project success. Take a few minutes to reflect on a project you worked on that you would consider successful. Now list five contributing factors that led to that success. Project managers want their projects to be successful and must document acceptance criteria. There are many ways project success is measured as determined by the customer and performing organization. The standard student response is that a project is successful if it is completed on time, according to schedule, within budget according to cost, and producing deliverables that meet customers' expectations, that is, addressing scope and quality requirements. What are the key attributes of a successful project? Success factors include, but are not limited to, proper project documentation, clearly defined and assigned roles and responsibilities, senior management or executive support, Note that this is always a key factor because without the support of senior management, most projects will not succeed. Stakeholder buy-in. Periodic team meetings and periodic meetings with the customer. These meetings are important because they facilitate clear communication and that will go a long way toward success. A competent project manager and team. This slide continues our list of key attributes of a successful project. It is important to identify risks and assess their potential severity and impact and to produce a risk response plan. A project baseline is also important and that includes a baseline schedule, a baseline budget, and a baseline scope. This baseline allows you to perform the next item on the list which is monitoring and controlling. If you haven't established a project baseline, there's no way to monitor your progress or control your scope. It is also valuable as a change control system, and that goes right in line with the next item, a well-defined scope. Any of us who have worked on projects know that scope creep or changes to the scope of the project are very common and so it is important to have a change control system that allows you to accommodate change but also to control it very well and to document it when it happens. Effective communication is also a very, very important part of successful projects. You also need to identify acceptance criteria, document it, and make sure that it is clearly understood by the project team as well as the client and other stakeholders. And finally, the team members should understand the criteria for measuring project success, whether it's cost, schedule, meeting specifications or deliverables, or some combination of all those factors. This learning activity addresses project failure. Reflect on a project you worked on that was not successful. List five contributing factors that led to the project's failure. The next two slides will list some of the factors that can lead to project failure. These factors include, but are not limited to, poor project communications, failing to manage stakeholder expectations, inadequate and insufficient project planning, lack of project documentation, which could include the project charter or project management plan, lack of stakeholder buy-in, lack of support from management, resource constraints, an unrealistic schedule, and poor risk management. 
Sometimes risks are not identified or assessed, so there is no plan to manage risk when it occurs. Additional factors that can lead to project failure, including unnecessary and or unapproved scope changes that can bloat a project's specifications and drain its resources, lack of change control management, not using or improperly following change procedures, not following the project management plan, poor project monitoring and controlling, continuously gathering requirements, poorly defined requirements or poorly understood requirements, undefined or poorly defined scope, over-optimistic or unrealistic assumptions, and unclear project roles and responsibilities. All these factors can lead to project failure. Project managers plan, lead, and control project activities. Their responsibilities include but are not limited to identifying and documenting project requirements, identifying team members, establishing clear and obtainable project objectives, understanding stakeholders' expectations, preventing unnecessary scope changes, monitoring and measuring project progress, communicating project performance and progress, ensuring that the team understands project objectives, and working with the team in developing project plans. Each of the nine PMBOK knowledge areas of project management include planning processes. The project team must take into account such aspects as managing time, cost, scope, quality, risk, procurements, and communications when developing their project plans. When there are approved changes during the project execution, the project plans should be updated to reflect the approved changes. 20 of the 42 project management processes described in the PMBOK Guide, 4th edition, are related to project planning. The project manager works with the team members to determine which of the 20 processes are appropriate for their project and then develops plans to manage the processes to ensure project success. After a project is initiated, the project manager and team will begin the planning phase. Based on the scope of the project and product, which can be gathered from the project charter and stakeholder register, the manager can develop a project management plan. The project team uses this comprehensive document as a master plan to guide them through project execution. Although it is finalized and approved during the planning phase, the manager continuously updates the project management plan when new information is acquired during the project's life cycle. A project management plan is a comprehensive and essential document that provides a justification for the project being undertaken, captures key project objectives, describes the approach for managing the project, summarizes what the project must accomplish, and details how the work will be performed, who will perform the work, and how the work will be measured, monitored, and controlled. The project management plan involves a collaborative effort between the project manager and the team members. The team's participation in developing the plan helps strengthen their commitment to the project. The overall effort is aimed at developing a plan that can help the team successfully accomplish the project objectives. Project team members are considered subject matter experts since they are most familiar with performing the project activities. They contribute their expertise to the development of the project management plan. In addition to subject matter expert input, the project charter outputs from the planning processes Organizational process assets and environmental factors are often key information when developing the project management plan. Organizational process assets include rules and policies, such as organizational governance, templates, standards, historical information, and organizational structure. The plan evolves through progressive elaboration. Progressive elaboration 
is an iterative process whereby the plan is continuously improved by acquiring new and detailed information as the project progresses. As we mentioned in previous slides, the project management plan is a cumulative document containing management plans for scope, requirements, schedule, costs, management, quality, process improvement, human resources, communications, risk, procurement, and change, as well as cost, schedule, performance, and scope baselines. Team members use the project management plan as a roadmap to guide them through project execution. It informs stakeholders about how project activities will be performed and managed. And finally, it integrates strategic and other planning processes into a consistent and coherent document. During project planning, the team works to clearly define the project scope by collecting requirements, creating a scope statement, and defining a work breakdown structure. Information regarding project scope is obtained from the project charter and from project stakeholders. After creating the work breakdown structure, often referred to as the scope baseline, the scope boundaries are established. This slide illustrates a project scope statement template. You will see the key items that go into the project scope statement. The scope statement is prepared after collecting the project requirements. It provides a description of the project scope that includes major deliverables, project assumptions and constraints, and descriptions of work. It also provides a documented basis for making project decisions and developing a common understanding of the project scope. It is a key input into creating the work breakdown structure. Constraints on healthcare IT projects could include Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, Electronic Health Record Standards, or any standards specific to the project. This concludes Lecture A of Project Planning Overview. In summary, we have reviewed the need for effective planning in health IT projects and have detailed the components and purposes of the Project Management Plan.